Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 2. Today is episode number 58. If you guys do enjoy the content, then be sure to leave a like, as it really does help with the YouTube algorithm at the moment. Feel free to subscribe, drop a follow on Twitch, and hopefully you enjoy the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. All right, so we're here for the Porsche 911 Herausforderung. Herausforderung. I don't know how to say it, but basically we're taking 911 GT2s. They're all stock. Uh, and apparently it was Porsche's last air-cooled sports car, which is pretty... Pretty cool. Uh, we're going to be going around Sunset Peninsula, Silverstone, Magello, and then finishing off with Laguna Seca. Let's do this. Want to meet up next week? Uh, maybe. I don't know what I'm doing next week. Depends what day. Friday's a no. And if I'm going to Cardiff, I'm may not be able to meet up at all next week. Depends what happens. Keep dancing. Keep dancing. Keep dancing. Monday or Tuesday. Fair enough. Uh, Monday might be fine. Keep dancing. Yeah, there is a the potential I'm going to uh, Cardiff. Which is in Wales. Sheep Shagger territory. Craig understands me. The fuck is an understand? I love taking the piss, it's funny. Bonk. Oh yeah, so a cool thing that I've realized um, when it comes to actually recording this footage um, because it just happened earlier uh, sometimes there can be some substantial frame drops uh, when it comes to like the Twitch output but as long as my PC is still working fine, the actual recording is untouched. Which means, even if my Twitch cuts out a bit, my actual video recording for YouTube will be fine. Keep dancing, keep dancing, keep dancing, keep dancing, keep dancing. That's just the whole lyrics of this song. <laughs> Daddy, what's up? Oh my god. Literally missed our conversation about that. <laughs> you, you. Mm -hmm. me, 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 me. <laughs> Coming back to me. Those rear tires do get warmed up pretty quickly when we start sliding around these corners. We've got five people in the chat at the moment, which is awesome. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the stream. Uh, and if you are, feel free to share the stream out. Every bit of support's greatly appreciated. <laughs> I 
I mean, yeah. There's no monetary input at the moment from chat. So when it comes to that stuff, the simp boss, it just doesn't, doesn't get affected. As you can see, the most that we've had is glitch, which I appreciate glitch. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, it's been a lot smaller the past two or three months than... Uh, in fact, the past six months, maybe even eight months. Um, the sort of, like, revenue gain has been so much smaller. Which, again, I'm not at a position where I can complain about it because this isn't a job. So, it's not like I'm doing this for a living. But, obviously, if I was in a position where I was actually trying to get a job from it, then, yeah, it, w it would start to be a bit more of a problem. But, again... That's a completely different scenario, so. Uh, yeah, I appreciate everyone here. Um, whether you drop money or not. As long as people are chatting, that's sort of the, m the most important part is that people are chatting in chat, in my eyes. Um, obviously, the views appreciated, but at, like a lot of streamers will say, a view can end up being just a number. As long as people are chatting, saying hi, even even just a hello when people join the chat makes my day. And it's a much, much better experience as a streamer to be able to stream when the chat is there. And that is the most important thing for me whenever it comes to streaming. Um, the money is a bonus at the moment. Yeah, most important part is having fun. Um, obviously, I'm always having fun with the games. But, obviously, if chat is lacking, it can be extremely difficult to push through that. Um, but as long as chat is there, I can't complain. Because in, in, in my eyes as a streamer right now, the most important part is the chat. I remember when this song came out and it was just played on the radio so much. It was brilliant. Such a tune. Katie on a Mission by Katie B. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing though. If we've always got people chatting in chat, we're having fun. It also makes the YouTube content a little more interesting as well. Because if I'm constantly talking about different stuff with chat, then the YouTube videos are a little more interesting. Because obviously there's all sorts of different discussions that happen then on the YouTube. So people who just tune in to watch from YouTube actually has a lot more interesting stuff to listen to. So, again, it's, it's a win-win. Like, the, the most important part when watching someone stream is to interact in their chat, especially as a smaller streamer. Um, obviously, if you're looking at a streamer with, like, 400 average viewers every stream then yeah may maybe it's not as important to chat but for streamers with five ten average viewers even two it's definitely a lot more important to chat in in their chat get a conversation going because yeah sir fallen has fallen not very far He's fallen over the curb. And he's got himself a small scrape that will heal. <laughs> it's 
soon. <laughs> New member of Annoying Orange Gang. Oh my god. I'm too busy reading chat. Uh oh. Okay, so the engine is fine, but the transmission's gone. <laughs> Behold the power of the slap. <laughs> that is brilliant. Ow. Is it me or video is a bit delayed to the audio? Um, shouldn't be. It's not on my end. Are you listening through a Bluetooth headset? Because if you're listening on a Bluetooth headset, there's going to be delay. Guaranteed. It's my new. Yeah, there should there shouldn't be um. Too much audio delay. Most of my stuff is wired, so. Hmm. Ah, your ball bag. My steering that fucked, I can't turn. Oh my god, this is gonna be horrendous. You want to take my life and fade away. Yeah. If you are on my side, refresh fix it. Ah, fair enough, yeah. I was, like, starting to get a bit concerned, though, but the good thing that I, with the way that I record stuff for YouTube, because of the fact that I don't have webcam or anything, if there's... Even like half a second of delay from my microphone to what's actually happening on screen, it doesn't impact too much. Um, obviously, it impacts a huge amount if you can see my face, because if my face is talking and the audio doesn't match up, it's weird. So. <laughs> that is fair enough. That is fair enough. But, it, like I said, pre pretty much because there's not much monetary stuff happening on my channel at the moment. Um, yeah, there just isn't any, like, substantial damage. Because most of the huge damage is dealt by um, bits and subs and stuff like that. The channel point is just a little nudge kind of thing. That was a terrible race. I'll be perfectly honest. All right, EO. I got to restart the race. I didn't know Max Verstappen. I kind of forgot to do the uh, reset. Let's go, Silverstone. Fun time. Do 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 do. 111 kg. I'm I think I'm 110. Maybe 115. I'm not 100% sure. It's been a while since I weighed myself anyways. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah, there's no way in hell that I'm actually um gonna get myself below 80 kilos in my life. Because I'm at that weight point where if I try and do any exercise, 
and do anything, more than likely, I'm only going to replace it with muscle. Um, like, I'd obviously lose weight first, but I don't... If I carry on and, like, actually, like, properly exercise and all that stuff, I'd end up probably putting on more muscle than losing weight at a certain point. I can guarantee trying to get under 80 kg will be fairly tough. Eighty one KG to hundred and eleven KG. Yeah, that's uh that's what lockdown did to a lot of people. I mean for me I just became fat because I was depressed. <laughs> that's pretty much how it happened. Yeah, I'm I'm not sporty at all. I sit on my ass and play video games a lot, so But I have fun doing it. Unbreakable. Got five people in chat at the moment, which is awesome. Playing video games is sport and it's over my... I think the most physical thing that I do is probably sim racing. But that that can be quite demanding on your arms sometimes. Legs, not so much. But on your arms, definitely, it can be quite demanding. Especially if you're doing, like, rallying. <laughs> sport mode activated. I would love to lose a bit of weight, but I genuinely do not have the motivation to do it. Um, I know there's space where I could actually give myself time, like, say for example, while I'm rendering videos at night, or whatever, I could like edit the edit YouTube videos, set them to upload, and while they're uploading, could go out for an hour or whatever but I just don't have the motivation to do it like genuinely the motivation is just not there No pain, no gain. Damn dog is driving me fucking nuts. For weeks on end, there's just a dog outside just barking non-stop. No pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. Result. Wee wee. Yeah, that's fair enough.
There we go, not bad. I mean, sometimes there are there are times when I'm like, like look at myself and I'm like, ooh, that's a bit too big. That's what she said. Uh, <laughs> there are some times where I look at myself and I'm like, I'm too big. But it's just getting the motivation. Like, exercise is not something I can get into. The, the closest I've ever been to, like, actually enjoying exercise is Beat Saber. That's about it. Um, but I'm, I'm not too into it at the moment. Not really feeling like playing much Beat Saber. I might try and get back into it at some point. Yeah, that's quite, um, that's quite a difference though. I think it's because you're just burning it all off though. His physical work and shit. Yeah, some random person that I don't recognize the name of has just sent me a friend request on Facebook. Yay! Not bad. Pistol Whip's really good as well. I enjoy that. Um, Pistol Whip gets me a little more tired out though, so I have to stop and have a break. Um, and after about an hour or so of Pistol Whip, the sweat is just unreal. Like the amount of sweat that I have just building up is so bad. And eventually it just gets into my eyes and it's like acid being poured into my eyes. It's not very comfortable. Like, I understand our eyes are fairly sensitive. This is going off topic. I understand our eyes are quite sensitive things. They don't like stuff going in them. But why can we pour water into our eyes, but our bodies were designed or whatever that we couldn't get sweat or anything else in them like at that point it would just absolutely fuck with you but you can pour water perfectly fine like what why so annoying need an hour per day to massively drop weight yeah i could quite easily put an hour a day in but it's the sweat like I got no problem with sweating all below the waist, below the head and all that, but it's the sweat that builds up with my headset. And it's just so uncomfortable that after a while I'm like, I'm not doing this no more. I think as well, the incentive for Beat Saber is more the fact that the songs are actual, like, real songs. They haven't really got any, like, popular, like, electronic songs or anything like that in Pistol Whip, so... It's a lot more difficult for me to stay interested in that when... Like, there's no... Pendulum, there's no... I don't know. There's just none of that in, in the game. Whereas stuff like, um... 
Synth Riders has it. You know. I mean, yeah, sure. I'll sweat less, but that still doesn't excuse the fact that I'll sweat. And remember, our houses and our buildings are built to be like ovens. Like, they're built to keep all the heat in and not let any heat out. So as soon as, like, outside is even relatively warm, it is unbearable. Like, honestly, the UK and... I find it hilarious that there are protesters, like that insulate Britain, that's like, our houses need more insulation. Like, fuck no, do they? Put more insulation in this thing, it'll be like fucking hell, like Satan's skull fucking you. In the eyes. Like, that's how unbearable it is in the UK. Our houses have been made so thermally insulated to the point it is ridiculously hot during the summer that we cannot cool down. And these protesters are like, we need more insulation to save the planet. Like, fuck off. No, we don't. Maybe in the winter, yeah. But then that's just going to make summer even more unbearable. Sorry, that's my rant of the day. <laughs> Alright, here we go, Miguelo. Do, 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 do. Learn to love what you don't know. <laughs> I mean, fair enough, but... Again, I also love stuff that I do know, so... You know. Do, 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 do. But yeah, some of the songs in Pistol Whip are absolute bangers, but... I don't want some absolute bangers. I want all of them to be bangers. I want... You know, songs that... I've heard before... It's sort of why I get more incentivized to play Beat Saber. I know it's different for different people, but... Beat Saber just allows me to play what I want with the songs that I want. Whoa, what are you doing? I do not understand why they've made this championship so much longer than it needed to be. I think it could, but I, I don't think it'd be bigger than Beat Saber. Because Pistol Whip, there's a lot more tactics and a lot more skill required. Beat Saber is just basic to understand. It's why Beat Saber became so popular when it did, because it was just as simple as that. You've got two lightsabers and you slice boxes. Like, sure, you could say, oh, you've got a gun, you shoot people. But then there's more in-depth. You've got to dodge, dodge the bullets. You've got to make sure you're punching certain people. If they've got shields, you have to shoot them twice or four times or whatever. It's a little more complicated than just... You have this, do that. Whereas Beat Saber is just, it's fairly straightforward. That's why Beat Saber is so successful. Because people can just pick it up and they can just do it. And it works. And I think its popularity properly got much bigger when, um,. It was actually introduced to the Quest 2. And people like getting into the Quest 2. Which is much cheaper. And having like standalone VR. Beat Saber is just the perfect thing for that standalone VR mode. Just put on the headset. Play. It is the perfect fit for it. Mew, 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 mew. Wheel, wheel. I 
I do like, though, that they've updated the quest so that um, Air Link is now not a beta feature. So you can actually, like, turn Air Link on and off without having to go through um, the experimental settings of the quest. Which is definitely a good thing. Because when it comes to me actually doing, like, sim racing VR and, like, Hitman and stuff like that, it's just so... Because I always do sim racing wired... Yeah. Mm. That's fair enough, but when it comes to Beat Saber, there's only one objective. It's just slice through the boxes. When it comes to Pistol Whip, you obviously have to time it to the music. Which, I mean, yeah, Beat Saber does the same. But, like, you also... It, it's the fact that you've got to do... Like, you have to analyse where the people are and all that stuff. It's a lot more open and a lot more challenging than something like Beat Saber. Beat Saber, you can easily just put it on, it's all in front of you, and it just works. That's why it, it works better. And why it sold so many copies. It did... I, I totally agree. Pistol Whip is a lot more enjoyable sometimes. It's, it's more of a workout, so I can't play it for as long. But I do find Pistol Whip does get the adrenaline pumping a little more than Beat Saber does. But I also see why Beat Saber sells more copies, because it just appeals more. Even without the aspect of modding, it just appears, appeals so much more. Bow. Bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Mm. But the boxes, the difference is the boxes are there. Whereas in Pistol Whip, the people are up there. They're up there. You know. They're in the corners. They're everywhere. So... They're a lot more spread out, so you have to be a lot more aware. So again, it is it is more challenging and takes a bit more practice to get used to. Yeah. I think you've just got a, a hatred for Beat Saber. But, like, there, there are aspects where, where, when it comes to, like, game design, Beat Saber ticks all the boxes that's asked of it and ticks them very well. Ah. Hmm, hmm, ah. It probably feels clunky because you haven't set it up right then. Because Beat Saber is not a clunky game. At all. Um... I've played a lot of different, like, music VR games. Stuff that goes towards music. And... I think the ones that are the best experiences are Pistol Whip, Synth Riders, and Beat Saber. Like, in my opinion, Pistol Whip is first, Beat Saber's second, and um, Synth Riders is third. The only reason Synth Riders is third is because it's a little more, like... There's no easy way to tell where the hit windows are for Synth Riders. So it's a lot more challenging. Um, but the song choices on Synth Riders is 
pretty solid. Um, and there's obviously like five different difficulty options. So it's pretty good for that. Uh, one thing that both Synth Riders and Pistol Whip has over Beat Saber is the fact that Beat Saber actually isn't a cross-buy game. So you can't buy it on the Oculus Store for Quest and then get it for PC as well. You have to buy a Steam version or a Oculus version um, to actually play that game. Whereas Pistol Whip or uh, what's it called? Synth Riders, you buy a copy of it on Quest and you have it in the Oculus Store that you can download to then play on PC. So you've got a higher quality version. I definitely want to look into um, potentially moving around my Sunday content to be like VR stuff so that every week, for once a week for about three hours, I am doing VR activities like Pistol Whip or Beat Saber or something like that. But I don't know if my endurance will let me do three hours of VR. Because obviously, obviously it would be PC VR, not Quest 2 VR. But I don't know if my endurance would be able to do it. And also there's the question of would people actually sit down and watch. Because I, I, I could quite easily... Saturday, cruise streams. Sunday, VR stream. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, falls a stream. Unless Falls is not on, in which case we swap that with some different content. And then Tuesday and Thursday we do rallying. Could quite easily do that. Still have some fun. Ding, dong, ding, ding, dong, ding. Dong, ding, ding, dong. Oh, I'd love to do that as well, man. Um, yeah, one thing you need to look into getting is a sim wheel. And try some VR sim racing. Like, honestly, I cannot recommend it enough. It is one of the... VR sim racing is the best virtual reality experience ever just because of the fact that the immersion factor and the realism factor is so much better like by all means when it comes to like exercise it's not the best like pistol whip, beat saber, those things easily will burn off more calories and stuff like that but like in terms of just the wow factor there is nothing like VR sim racing Oh, shit. I mean, for a Logitech wheel, it's about $300. So it's nothing ridiculous. And by all means, you can find a used one on eBay to try out first. Find a used one on eBay. $150, probably. You can enjoy that. Oh, thank you very much. I'll take my rewards. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Yeah, like... VR racing is... The best. Uh, the best VR experience there is. But it's hard to explain how good it is. And how... Like, it gets the adrenaline pumping more than anything. Because of just how cool it is to, one, experience cars that you cannot afford. Like, there is no chance in hell I'm ever going to be able to drive a McLaren F1. In real life. But in VR, cost me 40 quid to drive it. 
That's when I bought Project Cars 2. And actually, technically, Project Cars 2. If you buy it, like, a year or two after it's come... Like, Project Cars 2 would cost, like, £4 now. So, I mean... For a video game... And that you can enjoy... All these... Cars that you would never be able to drive... It's pretty fun. Ding, 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 ding. I still can't believe we're doing eight laps around looking at Saker. It's 12 minutes for this race. I need to do some research and see how um, dual graphics card PCs work. Because if there's a way that I can run a game off of a separate graphics card to my main one that works for OBS, I will 100% be doing that. And I need to, need to do that. Because when it comes to playing like Horizon 3 on PC, because I'm going to be playing Falls Horizon 3 on PC. Um, because it looks better than the console version. If I can't play that on PC smoothly while streaming, I may have some problems. Ding. Ding, ding. That pulls through, I'll get a race from it. Sounds good, sounds good. Honestly, though, like... When it came to, um... Because recently, one of my friends, who's has VR as well... He, um... He bought a... Or, like, got a Logitech wheel off a friend, but the power supply wasn't in the box. So he couldn't actually use the wheel. So I gave him my power supply from my old wheel that went bang. It basically went bust and completely fucked up. And um, so he's been playing Project Cars 2 VR a lot. I've been playing it with him. And honestly, multiplayer VR for racing games, it's even better than, you know, even better than single player VR. Granted, as long as the multiplayer is with people that you enjoy multiplayer with, and it's not some toxic, hostile environment, because in that case, it might not be so enjoyable. But, like, even when it comes to, um, what's it called? It's just so much fun. So much fun. Yeah, so I need to have a look how, how uh, if I can get, like, a dual graphics card set up in my PC so that I can use one graphics card for 
OBS and webcam and all that stuff and use the second one strictly for video games. Because if I can do that in a single build without having like two PCs, it'd be so much better. I have the nuclear launch code. I'd like to know the simp boss's location. Uh, somewhere in America. Just get rid of the whole place. It's fine. <laughs> uh, VR headset that I recommend. Is... It depends on the context and your budget. Because if you're looking for... Like, quality. The best that there is. And budget isn't too much of a problem. And you've got a really good gaming PC. I'd recommend the Valve Index probably more than anything because it does have one of the best displays out there at the moment. 120 hertz, 120 degree field of view. It is a really good looking headset. The only problem is, obviously requires you to have base stations and all that. If you're someone who likes sim racing a lot, I think the Quest 2 is the best headset because it's just you get in your setup you put the headset on there's no fancy base stations you've got to wire up or anything like that it just does does the job um and if you like traveling and want to take vr with you quest 2 if you don't have a gaming pc quest 2 um if you don't have the budget quest 2 it's basically really only the only two options. Yeah, so I'd, I'd say the Quest 2 is a good option. But it uh, might be worth you getting it sooner rather than later because the Quest has announced that they're upgrading the prices to £400 for their lowest model. So at the moment the 128 gigabyte is 300 pound and the 256 is 400, but they did put out a article or something that they're going to be raising it to 400 and 500 respectively. Cheers, Alex. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, exactly. What Fallen... Well, what Fallen said is basically what I was saying. I didn't realize they were actually hard to get as well. So that's also another point against the Valve Index. Um, I personally haven't looked for a Valve Index because I don't really need more than the Quest 2. Um, but yeah, when it comes to sim racing... Again, I don't know how complicated having base stations and stuff like that is. But the simplicity of just being able to put my headset on and um, the Quest and the Oculus just does all the tracking for me, no matter where I am, is pretty good. And especially in a sim setup when, technically speaking, your headset is going to be looking towards this direction and it's going to be a lot more challenging to... Um, I can only assume it would be more of a challenge for the base stations to actually detect you. So. Honestly, the fact that Valve needs to figure out a way to mass produce their stuff more. Because it's cool that they're making products, but they're not making enough. They could be so much more competitive. Like, if they did, like... They could easily be Sony level. I've still got my eye on a Steam Deck. I really want to get a Steam Deck. But, like, the Steam Deck, there's obviously a substantial weight in this on it.
Mm-hmm. They lose their own sales and, you know. Uh, I mean, I haven't used a HTC Vive, but I've heard that the display for back in 2016 was pretty good. But they're not, they're not good now. There's a lot of people that are... That play like VR sim racing, that it, it's just not good enough for them anymore. And also, yeah, the closed off ecosystem isn't a great idea either. I think the best option is the Oculus. And to be honest, if, if you are getting an Oculus, do not buy an extra cable for it. You don't need a USB 3.0. I don't know why they tell you that you need it. You don't. I use a USB 2.0 cable into my Quest and it still looks as good as it does with a 3.0 cable. So... Don't use a 2.0, uh, a 3.0, if you do use it wired. Yeah. That's the one, like, the biggest scam that Oculus did do, was telling you that you needed to buy this cable to use it. And even then, a lot of other companies that were like... Oh, we're going to make cables. They also jumped in on the scam and was like, oh, we need high... You need this high-speed cable? No, you don't. As long as you can plug it into your PC, it should work. Like, most cables are 2.0 2 or above anyways. Like, micro USB, USB Type-C. This is a 3.0 cable, granted, but I can still plug it into a 2.0 port and it will still work perfectly fine. So... Get a USB Type-C and just use it. I also didn't realize I'm still recording. Ha <laughs> ha! Give me my car. I hate it. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.